In today's video, I am going to be breaking down Drew Holiday and how he plays defense and why he is one of the best defenders this year in the NBA playoffs. Let's get down. Let's check out what he does extremely well that you can do too in your next game. Really quickly, if you want to become a very good shooter and extend your range, make sure to go check out my shooting workout. That is down in the description below. And if you are a basketball coach, make sure to go check out my complete guide to coaching youth basketball. That's down in the description below as well. Okay, so in this first clip, we have Drew Holiday. He's going to be playing some pretty awesome defense. So the first thing that he does in this possession is he's getting low. Now he's kind of forced to get low. He's trying to square up his shoulders and he's not exactly on balance. When Nemhard goes to try and drive on him at this point, Drew Holiday gets his chest in the direction as to where Nemhard is trying to drive. He directs Nemhard where he wants him to go by using his chest. He beats Nemhard to the spot. And he's able to then reach his hand in and poke that ball free. See the benefit to playing defense with your actual chest and not your hands is you can wait until that offensive player makes a mistake. In which case Nemhard dri dribbles that basketball just a bit too far with his head down because of course he's absorbing contact by the defender. This is why you never want the defender to create contact with you first if you're the offensive player. And because of that Drew Holiday was able to poke that ball free and then he was able to go down the opposite direction. Okay so now we have Drew Holiday right at midcourt and what we're doing or what they're doing right now is essentially trying to press up full court. He's getting into that passing lane right there which is making it extremely hard for that offensive player to make a pass and when he does that as soon as that player has that ball away from his body Drew Holiday reaches in with his hand to poke that ball free. If we zoom in just a bit we can actually see it really well right here. So as soon as that player picks up that ball to go and pass over here Drew Holiday Holiday gets his hands in and pokes that ball free. This is actually a really smart move because of course hands are part of the ball and at this point you need to be risky to try and steal that ball. At some youth levels that may be called a foul because the referees may just see this guy flopping around like it's like he's going crazy but in reality hand is part of the ball and Drew Holiday gets that steal. This is actually a perfect angle right here and we can see that as soon as this player picked up that ball, Drew Holiday is able to get his hand making contact with that ball which is extremely important. Of course hands are also part of the ball so he does kind of get the hand there too. And he was able to get that steal. Now this is why gap defending is so important. So when you're a gap defender you don't want to take your whole body and get in there. You just want to get enough contact. If you were to get your whole body in there that's way too deep. Your man is going to be wide open. You just need to fill the gap with a with an arm. You don't want to reach. You want to try and redirect that player away from the key. But this is too deep of a drive down the middle of the key for you to be a gap defender if you're in this position. By getting that hand in there and stripping that ball right at this point right here because that player right here was bringing that ball down to their waist right here. As soon as a player brings the ball down to their waist, you need to steal it every single time. There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it. If the player brings the ball down to their waist, it's a, it's a steal. It has to be a steal. Okay, so right here we have a play that's happening and it's actually quite interesting. So while it's usually a terrible idea to be following a player down court who's on a fast break and contesting a layup or a steal or I mean or a dunk because of course anytime that you contest a wide open layup or a dunk what's happening is now you're risking not just yourself for injury but you're also risking the offensive player for an injury. However, if you can time that offensive player's steps one, two, because we know they're going to most likely take two steps, then you can go up confidently to block their shot. You do not want to make any contact with their body. That is something that you do not want to do. If you can get up there and block that ball without making any body contact and you can time yourself perfectly, that is when you want to go for that block. If you're going to make contact with their body or land underneath of them, that is something you do not want to do because I've seen it so many times where the defensive player lands first and the offensive player breaks an ankle or sprains an ankle or sprains a knee or busts a knee up or something. Or what I've seen quite a bit 
is the offensive player lands first, and then the defensive player lands on them and busts up an ankle or a knee. That actually happens quite often. The defensive player generally lands last. This is really solid as well. So if you can do this, you're going to be a really good defensive player. At this point, the offensive player is essentially able to post up Drew Holiday. Now he's getting reached in on by another player, but watch what Drew Holiday does with his hands. He keeps his hands up in the passing lanes. Whether you steal the ball or just merely tip it, you're messing up their offense. See, Drew Holiday tips it there, he gets the steal, but even if this player got that ball, he would have got it like a second later. And because of that one second, you're now messing up their play timing where he may not have the open layup or a player may cut weak weak side because they're supposed to in their play or whatever their play calls for and just by messing the play up by one second can mess everyone else's timing up and you can then of course help your team win more games now in this play right here again this is risky because it's a fast break layup or dunk but drew holiday is going straight up in his player cylinder when this player offensively tries to dunk or lay up over top of drew holiday if this hand makes any contact with this body right here because his hand is straight up there's no offensive foul or sorry defensive foul there's zero foul if this if you make contact with this arm if your arm is straight up there's no foul you have to remember that so you have to make sure that your body is jumping straight up and straight back down if you're jumping to the side you're now moving outside of your player cylinder which would then be a defensive foul but if you're jumping straight up and straight back down there's no foul on you some referees at the youth level may call it but generally Generally speaking, that would be a clean play. I hope that these videos help you if they do hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys again in my next video.